Hi friends, I'm Quenby Gallahan, licensed marriage and family therapist. I've been a therapist here in the state of California for well over a decade, and this channel, The Grateful Therapist, is all about mental health, personal growth, and counseling tips. So please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Today's video is going to focus on therapy or counseling with little boys. Now, of course, the techniques and activities that I share in this video can be used with any child, regardless of how they identify. I wanted to make a video for you that is specific to a very common referral I receive both in private practice and when I'm doing counseling in the schools. And that is for a very active little boy. Often this boy is described as hyperactive, having trouble sitting still, having trouble following directions. Sometimes it is a child who is being evaluated uh, for something like ADHD. This is a kid who has trouble following directions. This is a kid who's often hard to calm down. This is sometimes a kid who gets aggravated or upset or distracted very easily. Sometimes this is a kid who's described as playing a little bit more roughly with his peers. He's very active, very energized, sometimes totally speaks out. In essence, it is a child that the teacher at the school might be reporting is harder to kind of manage within the classroom. I think this video will apply best to kids ages 6 to 11, but use your clinical judgment. So I'm in private practice now. I've been in private practice for many years, but I've always done therapy in the schools. Currently, I'm just doing one day a week at an elementary school. So the majority of my referrals are a kid that could meet this profile. So I always like to be prepared. I have several other videos on working with teenagers that you might appreciate. This one I'm going to focus on little very active kids and preparation is key for me. I like to set the table up in a very specific way. So there are things that this kid can do with their hands. Let me show you now one example of one way I like to set up my table for a really active child coming into therapy. So this is not my private practice office. This is a conference room that I use at the school. So I like to make the table look fun and colorful. These are little foam uh, pieces that I use a lot. These are some wooden sticks. We're gonna do a project with these today. Here is a bag full of yarn. Just anything that the kid can use uh, with their hands to play with and touch. I bring in stamps, markers, colored pencils, scissors, and I always instruct them that they are allowed to use anything in the room. They can explore it. They can touch things. This is my worst for wear glue gun, but this has been going for me for years, so it's not in the best shape, but it works great. I'll link one for you in the description section below. It's a great tool to have when working with little kids. So I bring in different kinds of papers and stickers, just anything that they can flip through, look through uh, while we talk to keep them engaged. And if they need to be moving around, that's okay with me. I have some different size sticks here and I've got a little baggie of feathers. These are things that are kind of tactile that can be touched and used in art projects. Now, there are so many tools and techniques therapists and counselors can use with active kids. A lot of therapists choose to play games, and there is a lot of value in playing games with kids strategically. I personally, um, it's just not my style. I don't do a lot of games with kids. I tend to focus more on art. Um, I'm not a registered art therapist, but I've taken a lot of courses in art therapy, and I was trained in something called trauma-informed art therapy, so I'm not an art therapist, but I use a lot of art techniques rather than games, but you have to figure out kind of what works best for you. There's so many things you can do, but to keep this video simple and helpful, I'm going to give you some activities that I love to do with these 
wooden sticks. I like to have a lot of things with active kids that's tactile that they can touch and that they can build with and they can move around. So let me show you how I set up my table and a few activities that you can use with these very simple tools. I will link the tools that I use down in my description section so they're easy to find. You're also welcome anytime to check out my Etsy store. I have a link to that in the description and in the Etsy store are all sorts of therapy tools that I've created. They're very affordable and it's a great way to get some of my teen question cards or grief counseling cards or little kid feelings, faces, charts and things like that. So feel free to check out my Etsy store which is also The Grateful Therapist. So we are going to make one of these spinners using the colorful wooden sticks. It's really quite simple. You just cross the sticks over one another and glue them one by one in the center. I choose to be the only one, the adult, who uses the glue gun when I'm working with little kids. I wouldn't ever want them to burn themselves. You can see my little kid that I'm working with here and I give him the task of using a larger stick just to press things into place so that it feels like we are working together. You can use as many sticks as you want. You can let them choose the color so they get lots of choices. In addition, you can use these little foam pieces to glue to the ends just kind of as more decoration and to make the activity last a little bit longer. By just placing a little bit of hot glue on the end, I place the foam piece and then I let the little kid use a stick to kind of get it in place. It's a great way to talk while we're doing this activity, talk about anything um, that is in my therapy treatment plan. It's really fun. They enjoy it. It's easy. And then it actually spins. So some kids come in and said, oh, it's like a fidget spinner. And I'm like, mm, it's just a spinner. You can put another uh, foam piece on the bottom, which helps it spin a little bit. And then here you can see my little client using it. And he was so excited to bring it back to class and share it with his friends and then put it safely in his backpack. Now, why would we want to give an active kid something to do with their hands, an art project or a game or something in therapy or counseling? A lot of it has to do with the premise behind things like art therapy, which is kids often feel more comfortable sharing and talking about hard things, like maybe what's happening in their family. That's I get a lot of referrals for kids who are having some significant family issues. Maybe mom is in jail or they're living with a grandparent because uh, mom and dad are drug addicts or homeless. Those are things that are challenging for little kids to talk about and challenging for them to find the words often to even describe what they're thinking and feeling about it. So a healthy distraction like gluing something or moving around Play-Doh or stacking little foam pieces, it helps them to be able to talk about hard things when they have this healthy distraction. Also, something I've learned a lot in studying art therapy is when they're doing something like art, they're in a certain place of the brain that is calmer. So you're calming down the brain, calming down the nervous system so that they can have an experience of talking about hard things without getting re-traumatized or without activating their systems too much. This is often why I like using watercolor paint so that they can be dipping the paintbrush in the water and the paint and then doing this bilateral movement back and forth. It just puts their nervous system in a calm place and from that place it is easier to talk about the things that are hard. If you're dealing with a kid who has some trauma, it's a great way to help them process, reprocess trauma because then they have the experience of feeling calm in therapy in a safe environment with a therapist counselor that they trust and doing something that puts them into a more relaxed, meditative, calm state with the art and then talking about something really difficult or traumatic. They have the experience of being able to talk about it, think about it, 
but staying calm, not going into that place of PTSD anxiety. So it's a very helpful tool. So for example, maybe while we're gluing, we don't have to make this intense eye contact while we're building something. So maybe I'm using the hot glue gun and helping them put their art piece together and talking and saying, so I heard you went to the jail to visit your mom. I know that can sometimes be upsetting for you. How was it? A lot of little kids, um, they don't feel comfortable with sustained eye contact. It's not like when an adult comes into your therapy office and they can sit and talk and process and share all about their family or their hard stuff. and maintain eye contact. For littler kids, that's sometimes harder. So doing something like gluing sticks or playing and piling things, it's much easier for them to make a little eye contact than go back to their art project. Really, it's a lot less pressure for them. It makes them feel more comfortable. Every kid's different. You might have some kid that's just chatty, chatty, chatty. That's great or wants to look and that's fantastic. But specifically, it's good to have tools in your therapy toolbox for kids that are not that verbal or not as comfortable. Maybe they're a little anxious or shy or it's just such hard stuff they're trying to process that giving them something to do while you're talking is such a relief. Friends, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and check out my other videos. And I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.